But aside from the getting up aspect of aerosol culture, how else did he evolve as a writer? In 1985, I read a book called Getting Up, which really changed my philosophies on the art form. And also, by speaking to a couple of people from New York, I realised that having a New York influence wasn't necessarily the way to go. So I just cut myself off from a lot of the writers which I knew, and just started to look to my own influences and develop my own styles that way. So I, look, so I got myself a letter set book, looked to calligraphic influences, then I just developed, began to develop my own style before I came out. Then I began to look to other people such as Salvador Dali, the Swiss surrealist H.R. Geiger, as well as being influenced by the thoughts, philosophies and paintings of other writers such as Phase 2, Lee 163, uh, Future 2000, Dundee, those. And then the more and more I began to like, cut myself off from other writers, the more I used to go inward and bring out what was a part of my true essence. Around the mid-80s, the media and media-related companies who were looking for fresh blood in the form of the latest craze or in-thing began courting writers like the Artful Dodger, or AD as he prefers to be called nowadays. Other early crews such as the Chrome Angels and Nonstop Arts also shared a part of the limelight for their 15 minutes of fame. Do people appreciate it, do you find? Do you get antagonism because you're doing it on public buildings? You get antagonism because it's like graffiti, tagged with the word graffiti, but a lot of people appreciate it as an art form. Because I see that most yeah. of the kids have got a certain amount of talent, so... Uh, what sort of places employ you? We've done um, nightclubs, I did Lenny Henry's show yeah. um, a while ago. We've, we've done Covent Garden boards, stuff for the GLC, that, that kind of thing. Some writers have also resorted to putting together press packs and business cards as they compete with mainstream and commercial artists for a variety of commissions, with two of the many areas featured being in television and the music industry. Though most don't have formal training in the field of art or design, their fresh approach and non-conformist design sense can sometimes give them a guaranteed edge. Based writer called Slick was featured extensively in Ice Cube's video Who's the Mac? Slick, who's renowned for his characters, gave a visual impact to Cube's lyrics as he colourfully interpreted the words of the song. Yeah, I did like some video for this rock band Extreme, but it was pretty cool working with those guys, you know, like I'm not really familiar with the rock scene. We, we constructed like a whole city, it was kind of crazy, you know, we even did this like crazy moon and, you know, like I said, I'm not really into like the rock scene, but it was, it was an interesting change, you know. No stencils. No little special stencil tips or nothing, it's just me, the can, and this tip, and the wall. Through videos, record sleeves, and backdrops, writers have been carefully integrated within the recording industry. Their involvement, however, doesn't stop there. Some, like Goldie and Massive Attacks 3D, have become equally successful, if not more so, as music producers. Even the Artful Dodger made the move from DJing to producing rap music. DJ is more or less in the past for me, even though I'm like helping on top billing now and again. But I'm getting into producing. Like, I've worked with Bomb the Bass, and I'm doing a couple of demos at the moment with a guy called Beast Sprint and another guy called Blade, and they're both from South East London. Another former writer, Bunny, originally from the crew Non Stop Artists, has set up a company dealing with customised clothing called Airheads, based in West London. Do uh, graffiti art on caps, t shirts, sweatshirts, jeans, jackets, or anything, any sort of clothing that can be like painted upon, you know, really. That's what we're trying to supply a service where we can retail to shops or actually do direct commissions. You know, so I'm still with the graffiti, you know, it won't die. Painting aerosol designs onto clothing is just the tip of the iceberg where street fashion is concerned because now there are an increasing number of aerosol writers designing their own clothing and setting up their own labels within the fashion industry. on the 
King's Road and in the West End is a popular streetwear fashion store with a third store in Nottingham as well as links in New York and LA. Staying true to their aerosol influence is an important factor to them. The graffiti imagery is very important when we actually buy the goods in. It's um, something that is like a number one thing to us. And, and not only in the sense of, oh, it has to be graffiti. It, it has to be something either regards to the colour, the boldness that we attract to. And graffiti imagery, if you ever look around, is on a lot of the stuff in the shop. And even if it, if it doesn't even look as graffiti as it does, the influences come from graffiti. You know, I mean, you can have a little walk around and you'll look at a lot of stuff and you'll think, oh, that's nice. But not a lot of kids would know that actually those ideas are born on the street, and born on the subways, you know. We asked Saab what type of custom frequents their bad apple store. We get a lot of people coming from musical, like musical related industries or advertising or any, any media related field is automatically attracted to this shop. I personally think it's like the Bad Apple logo. It's, very, it's a very, very big, bold, sharp statement in itself in the sense the logo is attractive and also the design. These two things, you see, the advertising is already done from graffiti around us in, in all our lives, you know. There's some everywhere, you know, whether it's on the toilet door you're entering or, you know, whether it's something you scribbled earlier on in your book and you've, like, done your name, you know. So when you see something like that on a, on a T-shirt or something, something which is individual with colour, big and bold, you actually want, want some of it, if not, you know, whether it's a simple hat, a t-shirt, a pair of jeans now, you know. With our appetite for bright colours and the type of visual imagery that our subconscious minds can relate to, it's no wonder that advertising consultants have also sought to jump on the aerosol bandwagon. of Walton and Wiggins advertising consultants made use of a writer in a series of ads for the South Thames Training Enterprise Council aimed at 16 to 18 year olds. But in using aerosol art for a major campaign, were there any initial reservations? We discussed it as, um, would it be seen as supporting, you know, a, a graffiti on the tubes and uh, all that sort of stuff. And we thought, as long as we did something uh, which was positive, it's really, it's really an art form rather than graffiti. And the guy that did the, uh, the uh, work for us um, always referred to it as street art, not graffiti. And I think graffiti is, is the word that's uh, been used to drive it down in terms of its merit. Were you looking for the overall response, uh, I believe, from uh, South Thames uh, Training Enterprise Council was uh, very good. Um, everybody at uh, South Thames Tech uh, liked the work. Um, they had the pictures framed, they're hanging on the walls. Um, the response from uh, uh, guys and uh, girls on the street, I think, was quite good. I don't, I don't uh, actually have the figures to hand. But um, some training places were actually filled, which is good. To be honest, when we first uh, started to look for styles, I didn't realise there were so many styles available. And it was a learning curve for me to realise that wherever people come from, there, w there was actually a different language, different graphic language and different styles for West, uh, West London, East London, South London and everywhere else. <laughs> Wiggins, the ad agency to put this one together for Lion Bar, tried to show aerosol culture in a positive light. Although advertising giant Saatchi and Saatchi copped out with their dismal attempt at imitating what writers can create in this ad for British Airways, what they try and pass off as aerosol art looks more like vandalism than anything else. They even had the nerve to rip off the work of a well-known writer called Shame. One thing that's sad is because people don't take our art form seriously, they think that they can just hire us to do things. And because our art form is something which we do anyway, that we shouldn't, that we should be privileged to get paid for it. Like you know, they can just give us twenty pounds for doing a TV set, and we're happy. 
or being involved in TV work or a video backdrop or whatever. But that's not the case. We are serious artists, we take what we do seriously. And even though the public and the media may not think so, we're worth what we, what we demand and we're worth even more sometimes. I mean, we're calligraphers, typographers, graphic designers, art directors, fine artists, and we're amongst the best in the world. But everyone else has got to realise that apart from us, because we're the only ones that know it at the moment. Surprising as it may seem, sections of the hip-hop community have also been slow to understand or truly respect the writers and their culture, especially in London. People on the hip-hop scene in London, they gave very little respect to writers. I mean, I can remember people getting into the hip-hop scene, so that the hip-hop scene, just so they can get girls. Wait a minute, you started dancing because you can pick up the girls? <laughs> <laughs> this is your life. That's true. <laughs> and then you went on to DJing? Well, I went on to DJ and to pick up the girls as well. As well. <laughs> and, and then rapping is yeah. like kind of more upfront. You can pick up even more. more. So that's, that was my reason for it behind it all. That is it. Where do the writers fit in amongst all this? People just saw it as a novelty aspect of the hip hop scene. You know, we were dirty, we always had paint on our hands and our clothes. Yeah, we could draw and paint, yeah, we were talented. But while they were breaking or getting down at jam, we were on paint and trains and writing on walls, which they found crazy. And like also, when they wanted us to paint jackets and do backdrops, they offered us measly amounts of money. Like, they wanted to spend like three, four days painting a jacket. They wanted it to look like the best thing around but they don't want to pay like 10, 15 pounds for it. Yeah, the same people when they do shows for breaking or rapping or DJing, they want to get paid in the hundreds for it. Doesn't equate. Especially when they're looking to do like a 15 minute spot. This attitude is gladly not universal amongst hip-hop enthusiasts. For example, Kashif, a former dancer now with his own clothing label, recognises the ability as well as the potential of aerosol art in the world of design and high fashion. At this moment I see that there's a lot of designers are designing for like adults and there's a lot of children being neglected and I'm seeing a lot of children wearing some off cost business, you know what I mean? Off cost is safe but you know, there's writers out there that can do artwork that would push the um the children's part like pretty far, I feel. And that's been neglected. You think other people would agree with you on that point? Yeah. Because I would I would think other people would agree for the mere fact that I haven't seen some I haven't seen children's clothing with any form of um aerosol art on it. I mean you walk up and down the streets of London, all you're seeing is um nap nap. And it is nap. Another dancer with his own label, Mark, of Checkmate School and Each One Teach One, has incorporated elements of aerosol culture within the universal concept of Each One Teach One. The concept behind Each One Teach One is like a basis of like teaching every individual about themselves and about everything around them. That's why we came up with the name Each One Teach One, because if you teach each one, every individual, then when every individual comes together, he makes a group as a group, it's a nation, as a nation, it spreads around the world. And like with the clothes, it's because like my partner, he's like, he used to be a graffiti artist, so it's like, I don't really work with a lot of graffiti artists, but a few we will be working with. I feel that aerosol art has a place in clothing, in designers' clothing. It has a, it has a huge place. It's just that there's a whole heap of avenues that haven't really been um, investigated yet.